Welcome back. So I've been driving myself kind of crazy trying to figure out uh, how a drone light show uh, performance designer would use Cinema 4D in order to do that. Um, and I understand there's software out there that has the ability um, to export your um, your animations to path files uh, through like a Python script or plugin. Um, so understand that once you get to that step, if you've done it correctly, that you can um, interface with some of the software that's out there that then allows you to simulate and then run your performance. But what is the best workflow for doing that inside of Cinema 4D? Um, I'm gonna also be exploring how to do this in Blender. Um, but I have used Cinema 4D a lot more. Um, I'm kind of slowly switching over to Blender for a lot of things, but um, so anyway, I just want to kind of show you how I first came out came about this. So if you're not familiar, um, you know, I've done a tutorial in the past about this, but um, I'll kind of show you how we could, how, one, one way to approach it, and the way that came to mind for me would be, um, you know, first thing, let's pay attention to we're gonna pay a lot more attention to scale. Um, we're gonna treat this like we're creating a, um, you know, an actual, an actual drone light show. Um, so we're, I'm gonna use, since I'm in the United States, I'm gonna use feet, and uh, I'm going to shrink this guy down to about the size of kind of what maybe a drone in the formation would be. So maybe just like a something like that, like a half foot round, and then a little bit shrunken down on the top there. Um, so you probably can guess some of the immediate steps. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a cloner. I'm gonna throw that into the cloner. Um, we could do either like a grid array and just get rid of the Y. Um, and let's say we wanna do like a 50 drum show. So I'll do, you know, 10 and a five there. And then on average, you're gonna to wanna to space these out. Um, let's see if I've got 10 going this way and they're only 6.5 feet. I'm gonna to need to probably go like three times that. So we've got enough space in between and then I'll really space that out as well. So we'll kind of come at it from something like this. Um, and the next thing we need to do is basically just duplicate this and then let's pick our first formation. So let's say we're gonna use a, uh, you know, I don't know, we're gonna have a fly up and I used the star before, let's try just like an inside. Okay, we're gonna do just like this kind of prism. Now I'm gonna pay attention to my position down here. So that's ground level roughly. But then the bottom of the formation, there's ground level there, it starts at about six feet so what I could probably do is I'll, I'll go in here to my mesh and um, I will uh, well, it didn't work I'm gonna have to make it editable I don't want to do that yet so we'll leave this alone we'll just kind of do some some guesswork but uh, so that's really ground level so 5.6 feet or so so let's raise it up like 50 feet so that would be 55 feet. And that's where our formation is going to be. And we're gonna make it much larger. Okay. So I've got my duplicated clone there. But now we're gonna do object. And we're going to obviously use the, uh, the end side there as the object. And then we're gonna to have to go up to our count of 50. So something like that. Um, well. You can already notice one of the biggest concerns you're gonna have is the rotation of the drone. Essentially what this looks like is that these drones are angled in order to make this happen. And that's one of the problems I've been f finding is, you know, how do I, how do I make my rotation like unaffected? Um, if it's iterated across the, 
iterated across this spline. So I, you know, I don't even know how to do that. I have, I've been searching for a way to do that. Um, you know, obviously if I start coming in here in my transform, well, that's not gonna, that's not gonna do anything, you know, cause now all I'm doing is just, you know, 50 cents here, half dollar the other side or something like that. Um, so anyway, that's not really that helpful. Um, but anyway, let's just play this, play this out and show you then what we would do. Maybe this, maybe somebody's got some comments on how to do this correctly. So then with this cloner selected, we're going to go to, um, get an inheritance and the object that it's going to inherit is going to be, um, let's see, I believe the inside. No. Well, wait, is that correct? No, sorry. It's going to be the cloner. And then we're going to hit Morph Motion Object. Okay, I think I put the wrong cloner. There we go. Okay, so now you'll see what's cool about this is, yay, it's flying up and it's getting into a formation, but we still have that angle problem. The other thing we have is this chunky, blocky, you know, these drones are just kind of doing what they want to do. Um, we could do, um, obviously add some effectors. First of all, I don't want to mess with rotation or scale. So, you know, we could just, uh, you know, can't put an effector on an effector. So I'll, I'll click my cloner and I'll go MoGraph effector and I'll just grab like a random. So then you have the problem of like, well, okay. Problem with that is now it's just spread out all across the ground. So you're not getting a good measurement as to where anything is. And then when it flies up, same thing, it's a mess up here. So then I was like, well, you could keyframe it and take the strength of the effector, um, of the random effector, but then it's, it's, then you're gonna have another problem. So let's go to the first frame. Let's say we do that, okay? Inheritance is at zero. Random is at zero. Let's say as we go to about here, oops, in the inheritance. So, sorry, let me first keyframe that last inheritance tag. And now I realize I need to reverse this. Um, the other big problem is going to be there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of overlap. Okay, now we're starting to get to this point of like critical drone collisions happening in midair. That can't happen. So that's what I'm saying is we could do this random effector where we have a keyframe there, where right about here we turn the strength up and kind of keyframe it out. So it's got a little bit more of a random distribution. Um, you know, and I've, but I've played with these modes and there's really no way to set a parameter in here to keep the um, distance uh, constrained. So we're not gonna use that. So then obviously it brings you back to like, okay, well maybe we could use a constraint tag. Um, unfortunately, you know, or, or sorry, even before that, let's try the uh, push apart effector, okay? Now, this is great, but look at the, look at the kind of particle bounce that we get. And even if we turn this down a little bit, if you play this out, okay, there's no way drones could handle this velocity change. Once they start getting close to one another, they start exploding away from one another. And we could turn the, you know, the iterations up quite a bit. Um, and, you know, it just makes it look like fireflies. And, you know, even if we took the inheritance uh, way out, made it slowed way down, you'll notice Okay, the animation itself is slowed down, but look at the particle interaction. It is like it's under pressure, and that's just not gonna fly, right? 
So again, no real parameters in here to, um, to change that, to make it better. You know, even if I turn down the radius, it's still gonna, when it does get within that radius, it's gonna have the same strength. I could turn the strength down, but now we're just getting back to where we were. And notice, even when they're interacting, they're still pushing apart pretty rapidly. So we don't want that. Well, then it's like, all right, now, as I mentioned, we can start using some constraint tags, but uh, I had a lot of trouble with this as well. I mean, obviously like a rigid body is just gonna fall. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, and, and I guess I should show you, say where the rigid body is just gonna fall unless you're gonna say trigger on collision. And then in which case, you know, you'll see once a particle collides, it'll just fall to the ground. In that case, we didn't have one, which was surprisingly good. Um, but that doesn't help. That doesn't help us at all. And we could, we could up the trigger velocity threshold, or I guess lower it. We could do it on peak velocity. Um, which that means like in the middle of the animation, basically it should start having the rigid body interactions happen. Um, but we're not getting much overlap there, but we're still having our blocky fly pattern there. So it's useless. Um, I've tried using like a collider body and triggering it, you know, on collision like that still doing the same blockiness um, you know we could even go back to adding the the random effector but we still have the same problem we had before so anyway I'm just talking in circles this is literally my brain dumping all the crap I've had to deal with with this I've seen recommendations out there I'm sure there's somebody out there that knows you know, there's a Python script out there that can do this more adequately, but really, since you're gonna be putting drones that are of value in the air, you're gonna probably wanna do this in a way where you have control over all the elements. And uh, so in the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you maybe a slower way, but what I think is actually a really effective way to create a drone light show um, program. And you may as well take your time because if, you know, depending on how many drones you're throwing in the air, you might be putting, you know, anywhere from $30,000 to $200,000 worth of equipment in the, in the air. So you may as well um, really take your time. So we'll talk about that in the next tutorial.